All right, yesterday we learned about Rabbi Yehuda Hanasi. It was after he was the one that wrote the Mishnah. This is after the destruction of the temple. I don't know, somewhere around 100 years after. He was the leader of the Jewish people. And we learned last week, not yesterday, remember what he had to say? What did he tell us? Rebbe, Rebbe, that's Rebbe Hudanasi. He said, what is the proper straight path that a person should take? Anything that's good for him and good for others. And he said, you have to be careful with all the commandments. Just mitzvahs that you think are very important and that they're not, and the ones that you think are very, very light, don't know, you don't know the importance of any commandments. Even the smallest ones have the same importance as the big ones. And you should consider what you are losing by, <clears throat> by, by not doing a commandment compared to what you're gaining by not doing a commandment. Namely, you're, you're gaining a little bit of, I say, pleasure about for yourself by not doing a commandment or by doing a sin it feels good so that's what you're gaining good feeling but you're losing spirituality you're losing your own dignity you're losing your own self-value losing a little bit of your own jewish identity that's what we said yesterday okay now let's do today's rabbin gamliel he was the son of Rabbi Yehuda Nasi. And they were all, this was from the direct descendants of King David. They were the leaders of the Jewish people. And like we said before, Rabbi Yehuda Nasi, he was one, it says in the Talmud, he could have been Mashiach. He had all the qualifications. <clears throat> For whatever reason, God did not do it through him, but nevertheless, okay. Yafet Talmud Torah in Derech Eretz. It is a good thing to learn Torah and to work that if you work at both of them, learning Torah and also in a job, so a person, let's say, is very expert at learning Torah, so he could spend one hour of the day, whatever, learning Torah. Special people like Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai, they can learn the Torah all the time, but it says and usually there's only like one person in every generation that's like that. Just sits and learns Torah, but so he says, it's a good thing that you earn your own living. Teach people. You can, you can get money from being a teacher. You can get money from having a business, something, but you should not be dependent on others, taking charity. Not good. Working also keeps a person active in the world and productive, and he doesn't become a, what do you call a parasite? Oh, even more, any Torah that hasn't got some sort of work with it, in the end, it's going to be <clears throat> negated and bring a person to do sin. A person that doesn't have money, it's very easy to bribe him. Bribe him, you give him a lot of money and say, you know, set up, set you up with a nice house with this. And of course, you're going to be my friend. I do all these good things for you, you have to do good things for me. So therefore, a, a, a rabbi should have his own source of income, somehow or other. And anyone who works with the congregation to improve the congregation, right? If you are a leader of the congregation, you tell people what to do. You're the rabbi, you're the gabai, they call the sextant. You tell, you give orders. You are Mali Mimon Lashem Shemaim. You should do it for the sake of heaven. Don't do it for your own sake. Don't think that you're a big boss or a big taskmaster or that you're superior to anyone else. Because the you're dealing with Jews here, and Jews they have the merit of their fathers. So therefore, you're not dealing with just any regular normal people. And even also regular normal people, you're also not supposed to act in a, in a cruel way. But in addition to that, also Jewish people, you have to act with them and with respect. <clears throat> and if you really succeed in, in inspiring and directing everyone to do, then I will count 
of course, and really, in the end, God does everything, right? God does everything. He creates us, and he gives us energy, and he gives us our success. I mean, we're certainly aware that there's people who are big geniuses, and one day they just lose all their money. And there's other people who are total dunces that don't know anything. And suddenly, all of a sudden, they win, you know, the, the, the lottery, or they get a big inheritance, and who knows what, get a gift. So really, it's God doing everything. But if you work for the sake of heaven and any successes you have, God treats it as though you did it. As you, He gives you all the credit. Let's have a little look at this. Okay, so we have three. First of all, you should learn Torah and also work, make money. Another one is that Torah that doesn't have some work with it, in the end, it's going to come to a tragedy. And if you're working with the congregation, then you should be respectful to them and etc. And then if it's done for the sake of heaven, God says, I'll treat it as though you did the whole thing. Derek Eretz says, Torah has to be with Derek Eretz. You have to do some sort of work or at least be a businessman, something, a little bit, a half an hour a day, an hour a day. It says that if you work at, at a job and you also learn Torah, then this makes you less apt to do sins. Why? Because the Torah says weakens the power of a person. And when a person works, that also breaks a person, breaks a person's body. You have to work, you have to do what other people tell you. you have to... And because of that, because a person also works at the Torah and also works at, at a job, so therefore there's less, I you say, egotism involved, lust, less, it, it, it minimizes a person's lust. And all Torah that hasn't got some sort of work with it, if you can say, listen, I'm just going to work at Torah all the time, and that'll do it. What do I have to do jobs for? What do I have to do work for? As is therefore, it has to say that any work that doesn't have, any Torah that doesn't have learning with it, in the end, don't think that it's going to increase your Torah. Because it's impossible for a person to live without any food. And because of that, eventually it's going to come that maybe he'll even steal, and who knows what he's going to do, and cheat and lie in order to make a living, you could be a big rabbi, but you have to eat. Your wife wants to have a new dress once in a while or something like that. So you'll justify yourself anything you do. I'm a big Torah scholar. I'm God's chosen person. I can, uh, you know, who is this guy? I can lie a little bit, cheat a little bit. It's not lying. I'm doing for the sake of the Lord. So you're fooling yourself. It's not so. Therefore, a person should have his own source of income. If you are working with the congregation, <clears throat> right, you're working, you tell people what to do you're the leader of the congregation, that you should do it for the sake of God and not to make a big crown for yourself to say that I did it and I am, look at what I am doing for everybody and I am sacrificing myself for you. Why? Because the, the, you're dealing with Jews here and these people have merit of the forefathers of the congregation. Now, usually the way it is with Jews, is anybody today that knows he's a Jew Somewhere back there, let's say two, three, maybe four generations, no more than four, were, were religious and they were self-sacrificing. Because it was very, very rare for a Jew to hold on to his Judaism without making some sort of sacrifices in the world. Because the Jews, especially in Europe, in those places, they were surrounded by enemies. The non-Jews hated the Jews. And once in a while, a Jew would get along with the non-Jews. It could be. Right? But, but it was rare, especially in Europe. And in the Arab countries, like in, in Tunisia and this, and in a way it wasn't really much better, but at least the, the hatred, it was always simmering. It was like on a, on, a, on a low flame all the time. Mainly because the Sephardic Jews that were in the Arabic countries, they really had belief in their righteous people. There was almost no such thing as a non-religious uh, Jew in like Iraq or 
uh, Morocco or Tunisia or any of these places. There was all the Jews were religious. That only began like when the French started taking over in, in Morocco and the English took over in Iraq and, and etc. Then all of a sudden things became became uh, you say there was such a thing as a non-religious or an anti-religious Jew. Before that, there was no such thing. So in that merit, I mean, this is what I think. Therefore, the non-Jews, the Arabs, they made the trouble for them, but not anywhere near as much as it was for the Ashkenazic Jews in in um, in France and in England. So it says, in any case, Jews, two, three, four generations, they have tremendous merits from their forefathers. And that merit is... Is, is stands for them and helps the people that um, that are working so that they succeed. Not because necessarily of your genius and your working. So that's sort of what happens nowadays in the in the army, in the Israeli army. Israeli army. I mean, they have. Excuse me that I'm saying this, and I could be totally wrong, and I hope that I am. But they have the worst leaders and the biggest buffoons and bumbling idiots are leading the army. How do you know, how do I know this? Because as soon as they get out and they go into politics, you see that they're just, they have no backbone. They have no sense. They're giving land back to the Arabs. Yet I mean, you can go one after the other, after the other, after the other. They're just afraid of the whole world. And they're just, but as soon as they get into be in the army, all of a sudden they get these ideas, you know, and this, and, and, and everything just works out for them, you know, and the government tries to tie their hands. Uh, famous stories with Eric Sharon, where he, he ignored what the government said and he attacked anyway. So why did this? Because it's the merit of their forefathers. The merit of their forefathers, that's what gives them success. It says, therefore, if you, everything you do, you're the leader of the congregation. So you have tremendous merit from the previous generations of Jews that were self-sacrificing. That's why you're succeeding. It says, but if you do succeed, it says, even though that your success is not coming from you at all, it's coming from the success of the fathers and the, the previous generations. But nevertheless, I treat it as though you were the ones that actually did it. Because you're acting, you're, what you're doing is for the sake of heaven. Okay, that's it for today. We learned the second Mishnah of the second chapter, second of the six chapters of Pirkei Avot. Have a good day with Mashiach. Now, God willing, 8.15 tomorrow morning, we learn again.